death, a very important uh, question and statement. Let us begin by examining just what death is. What we think of it as, with our minds, is the death of the body. And that's true, because the body is the only thing that dies. And death is the end of your sense, all your senses die with your body. And because your memory is connected with your senses, all your memory dies with your senses. So you have no memory, and you have no senses, and you have no body. Now what does that leave? And the answer is, it leaves nothing, nothing to speak of, nothing at all is there left to speak of. Because what is left is consciousness. The very thing that I endeavour to help you to, to be and realise as you go into this body beyond the senses into the state of being. Now you'll notice that in the state of being you are beyond thought you have no memories, because memories create thought. You have no information. You have no knowledge, no knowing. It's just as if you were nothing. And of course the mind, which is the servant of the senses, the body, gets very afraid of this state of nothing, of being, and if I enter it suddenly or more deeply than I usually do, the mind starts to get very agitated because the mind is always used to something. Because the mind, even if it's nowhere, if it's deprived of its senses, because it's always got its memory to think about mum and dad, where I should be, where I want to be, all the rest of it, it can conjure up some data from the past. So that's what we're doing when you come to me. Every word that I speak, every example that I give, everything is to get you to be able with your intelligence, which is the only thing you've got is your intelligence in the spiritual life, that's all you've got is your intelligence. Not your mind, because your mind is not intelligent is to get your intelligence to be able to sink down into the place of being, of being nothing, which, as you remember I said yesterday, is the place of consciousness. In other words, it is the place of death. Behind the body, behind the senses, behind all wanting, all trying, all competing, is the place that I'm talking about, the place of being. Now it is very difficult for us, unless we are in that place, have the knowledge of that place, uh, to visualize it, which the mind tries to do, or understand it, the place of consciousness. But the closest we can get is when we go into being and endeavor to drop deeper and deeper into this place of being, which is the place of death, which amazingly, is the place of life. Death is the place of life. Here in this existence where we are all bodies with our memories, our feelings, our mind that's always busy, this is the place of living. There's no life in this place. This is the place of living and imagination, of fear and doubts, and unhappiness, and wanting, and trying, and the fear of failing, 
is terrible in us at every level of failing to love, of failing to be, of failing to just do. It is a terrible place of fear, doubt, guilt. Now, when you're dead, of course, because you have no body and you have no memory and you have no senses, then there's no fear, no doubt, and everything that you have ever been is wiped out as far as knowledge is concerned. That is nothing. And the most difficult thing in the spiritual life is sometimes, sometimes in everybody's life, if they're sensitive enough to see it, because many people are not sensitive enough to see anything connected with truth, so they miss it. But sometimes the energy of death rises in the body into intellectual reflection, which means that you can sense it in the body. And there is something very, very fearful to the mind that has risen in my body. It is black or it is dark because it has no experience in it. And it is very, very real. And it is just there. It doesn't move. It doesn't say anything. It's just there. And it is terrifying to the mind and emotions. And the first thing that people do, is tend to do, is to think, to do something, uh, uh, to change the, uh, the atmosphere, to get up, do something. When really, in the spiritual life, the best thing to do, if you can do it, and it's very difficult, is to just stay there looking at death, looking at this unknown, this indescribable energy that's in your body and that can rise in it. Because to be able to look into death is a very stilling thing. Now that's one side of death that presents us with an energy that we just do not know and that is terrifying to everything that lives, that is projected into existence. But that's one aspect of death that you might or might not have experienced. But that's death for the living. Death for the dead is purely returning into consciousness. Now as being that we practice here has no memory, no thoughts, nothing to do. So that is the state of death. Now how would you describe that? So you can't describe death because you can't describe being. If someone were to ask you, well, he talks about being, well, how do you be? What's this being? What is it? And they always look for an entity, you see. The human mind always wants to make an entity of everything because it's used to dealing with entities. But how could you describe being? You would have to say there is only way, one way to know what being is and that is to be it. I can't describe it to you. <laughs> 